This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Tom, some important football questions for you coming up. But first, good morning. How about your Braves being the number two seed in your side of things? Welcome in to uh, a show where we're going to surprisingly talk a little baseball with you since the playoff starts tomorrow. Uh, well, thank you very much, Ty. You know, um, it was a long, long haul back from being ten and a half games out. And as much I feel a little bit bad for the Mets guys because I like the guys on that team, like Scherzer, DeGrom, and some other guys, Alonzo. Uh, but I don't feel bad for Mets fans, you know. Who's the, the bum, flare up. Who's the bum commentator that said this bum, race bum. was or, over and it, it, he works for <laughs> – New York something up up top. I know you know his name yeah. because you've probably been making fun of him. No, I haven't. I don't. I don't get into all that crud. Uh, I, I did see it. You know, the race is over. Nick Nick, whatever his name is, and maybe maybe New Yorkers would call him a bum. I'm just going to call him. You know, wrong and you know a little early. Why, why pronounce a, a race being over? You know, in June. So he was wrong, and you know, it's. And hey, look now. The whole thing was to get the, the lead in this because it's a tougher route. If you win your wild card round, they, they play the Dodgers, and that would have been the Braves if we hadn't done it. Now we sit back for watch the three games and play the Cardinals and, and Phillies uh, winner. I believe that's how it's paired up. So, you know, it, it was a huge deal, and the Braves are uh, a franchise that's used to winning, and it, that, this was a nice, nice well. run. Since, since we came back and won 104 games in 93 and edged out the Giants, it's like the best finishing run we've had. Well, it's it's come a long way since the days of Del Murphy and Bob Horner and Glenn Hubbard. I mean, when I was watching them, when I was <laughs> when I was a Braves fan watching on WTBS and uh, Del Murphy would strike out every time if he threw it low and outside. I just, you know, we uh, we made a lot oh. of trips to the old Fulton County Stadium when I was a youngster. Yeah, I went to a bunch of games um, in the stadium back then, and I, I went. There were some down years in the mid '80s, and mm -hmm. there were three thousand people at the stadium. Yep. Tom, let's uh, switch over to football. This team, I don't know if their backs are necessarily against the wall, but they have lost two straight, and they're looking down the barrel of a third straight loss. How do you think Sam Pittman's team will respond on Saturday? Oh, I'm, I think they're going to give us strong effort. Um, this is the position he kind of likes, like when people count them out, when they're underdogs. That's the way they went into Starkville two years ago when, you know, he won the game or they won the game that kind of launched his his status as kind of a folk hero around Arkansas with uh, the, turn, turn the damn jukebox on. So um, the, problem that, the problem they have, and I mentioned this on the air last week, was stopping Alabama, and, and in this case it's, how you stop Mississippi State. And I know they've had a measure of success, particularly two years ago when K.J. Costello and that group was really feeling it after they lit up LSU for 623 passing yards uh, against man-to-man -man defense. And then Barry Odom's like, well, no, this is how you play them. This cloud coverage with, with the drop eight and really, you know, really befuddled them. Uh, but still, I think Will Rogers, I think, I think Mississippi State's going to have ways to attack and – we know that Arkansas is struggling to tackle in the open field, struggling to play close enough man-to-man -man defense, so it puts them in a quandary. I told some guys last week, if Alabama gets the ball 11 times, you know, they're probably going to score seven times, and you just got to hope that a few of them are field goals and, and you can match them. Well, they did score seven times, but they were all touchdowns, and it was 13 possessions that were legit, not end of half. And they made our, our Alabama punt, what, twice, and, and, and they had an interception. And, well, otherwise, you know, Bama was rocking and rolling. So they have to just find ways to somehow win, get them in third and mediums, third and longs, and then win that third down so you make them punt. Tom, all of our listeners, all of your readers want to know about K.J. Jefferson, if he's going to play or not Saturday. We had one that made a good point with all the loud noises after concussions, assuming he has one, we don't know 100%. That can sometimes affect people. If he plays, what do you think the crowd, what kind of impact will the crowd noise have on him this Saturday? Well, yeah, that, that, that is a good point. And I thought Coach Pittman laid it out pretty clear last night. You know, without saying it, you know, going through the protocols and you have to search. Last week, 
after the Tua stuff, I, I just emailed myself this long explanatory that somebody wrote. I think it was AL.com because of the Tua connection to Alabama. But it's this long explanatory about how you come back from concussions. Um, and the NFL protocols and guidelines might, you know, are probably slightly different than what they are in college. But, you know, you pass these certain tests and, and then you get cleared for more stuff. And it, it's, it seems to me that he had what I'd consider a more mild grade concussion because he was back at practice already on Monday and mm-hmm. Tuesday. And so, and he did quote a little bit last night. We don't know what that was. Uh, so, in other words, I think he's getting close. And that's why Pittman uh, said that we still have a few days. There, there's, there's a ways to go. So, I do believe, and, and even if they find out, I don't know if they'll announce it, and, you know, there, there will be no element of surprise for Mississippi State because they know he's, he's low on the borderline, so to speak. And so, yeah, the, the ringing bells, they probably would amp it up knowing if K.J.'s in the game. And so, um, I don't know. I think mentally the Razorbacks are probably very prepared to go into it with this Fortin and Hornsby and, and roll the dice. So as you studied kind of the protocols for return, where, where does getting back to that first practice and as Coach said yes last night, doing a little bit more later, where does all that fit in kind of the timeline of a return from what you've studied? Well, it was actually – pretty detailed and and i don't remember all the particulars but for two like it's you know uh you can start um like light jogging like on a treadmill and then you know then you see do tests and do you pass that yeah and throwing is down the line and we don't know if kj has thrown or not well actually you know i think he has thrown a little bit and so that was a down the line uh deal for the, the two uh particular comeback um, and so if the same case holds for Arkansas and, and KJ, then he's further down the line. Yeah. Um, and, and I do believe, you know, if he continues to progress a pace, he might be cleared. But here's the way I think about this. And, and I think this is Sam Pittman's logic, too. Even if the doctors clear him, the trainers clear him, he passes every test, you leave it in KJ's hands. Right. But this is his life. This is his career. And I, I think you say – Son, this is up to you. Um, and then KJ can make that decision. Uh, the way um, the uh, awareness that people have now for CTE later in life, when you ask a lot of guys that played in the 60s, they played through a lot of head, head traumas. And so a guy like KJ is armed with a lot more information, and I would leave it up to him. And if he doesn't play, Arkansas fans don't need to say a word about it. You know, and when NFL teams and that day and time comes, when they look at your medical chart, head injuries and concussions are, are probably more red flags than a than an ACL reconstructive surgery or some kind of something uh, that's more joint related. It probably yeah. raises more red flags just based on what you read, players you talk to that have been through it. Uh, concussions are a real um, red flag and a, and a touchy subject when it comes to the NFL and your draft. Yeah, I mean, and you know, quite honestly, I would think every quarterback, like I would think 80 or so, 70, 80% of quarterbacks and running backs uh, have probably had, had dealt with it. I mean, you saw what Joe Burrow said this week. He's played games and he's forgot what happened in the second half, and then he knows he's been dizzy. Um, and so that toughness quotient still comes into play for a lot of guys. Uh, I want to win for my team. You know, this is what I do. Um, it's almost this like gladiator mentality for a lot of people that, yeah, I know, I, I know I got my bell wrong, but I'm okay. And if, if they're not feeling the, the heavy symptoms, sometimes they play through it. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not an expert on it, but I do know that there's multiple grades of them. And I get the sense that the KJ did not have one of the worst ones. Tom, we talked about this yesterday, but I'd love to hear your take on it. You know, Everyone knows that Malik Hornsby didn't enter the game last week as the quarterback. Everybody knows that he scrubbed his social media uh, accounts of, of Razorback items only to uh, to reinstate a lot of that. What do you think happened in in that 24-hour period where Hornsby kind of checked out and checked back in as it appeared? Well, just from my amateur psychology standpoint, uh, a frustration that you felt, no, you were the number two last year, and now Kate Fortin, is the number two and Sam Pittman did point out and, and I think Kate Fortin was the legit number two, but 
the fact that they were down and had to pass, I, I, it made more sense that Fort was in there. I mean, it wasn't a great stint, you know, 12 plays, four out of 10 passing. But, um, you know, the, the, the kids has moved them in, in two-minute drills during practices. They've talked about that multiple times. He knows the offense and all that. And, and hey, look, if we see both guys play on Saturday, we're going to have a lot better evaluation against a tough defense that comes at you. They, they run blitz you. They bring a lot of pressure. They disguise stuff. And we will see. Um, Kay Fortin actually has a higher yards per carry in his short career or his a less experienced career than KJ. I, it ran in the paper today. I think he's at 5.9 per carry. I think Malik's in the 5.1 range. And KJ is a, around three points something. And that includes a lot of, you know, fourth and one sneaks that you're not going to get much and sacks. And, and I really wish college football would separate sacks from mm-hmm. individual rushing, and maybe they will at some point. Yeah. So what's the most likely scenario in your opinion on Saturday? One quarterback plays, two quarterbacks play, or we see three different quarterbacks at some point against Mississippi State? Well, if K.J. starts the game, I, I think they would just go with him, you know, as long as they're in the game and he's doing okay. And then, then you're on the one scenario. But I get the feel that it's probably going to be two and, and not K.J. It, and I could be wrong there. I mean, if he gets cleared and he wants to play, I, there's no doubt in my mind, if he wants to play and he's cleared, he will play. So, um, but let's just say he's out of the mix. I think they'll use them both. I think they'll try some, some Hornsby packages that make Mississippi State have to do different things, they have to think about how they're going to bring their pressures. Um, and if, if Fortin's in the game, I think it's more likely to be passing stuff. Look. Arkansas has got to figure out where the pressure is coming from and hit hot routes to Trey Knox, little swing passes to their tight end, uh, slants to their receivers. They just have to be on the same page. And if they can do that and, say, keep pace with the scoring um, and win the turnover battle and, you know, special teams being even or whatever, then they'll have a chance to win the game. But A&M showed last week, or excuse me, Mississippi State did, they won the turnover battle four to nothing. Their special teams excelled. I think they blocked the field goal and mm-hmm. turned it for a touchdown. Uh, had a pick six. They did pulled away. Right. Did everything. They right. did. And they pulled. A, they pulled away in the game. Otherwise, it's a pretty close game. And the same thing held for Arkansas versus A and M. You know, a missed field goal and and the, the the KJ weird play, and Arkansas wins the game probably. Um, they de- dominated it more statistically. So I think if Arkansas can hold its own, um, get off the field a few times, maybe force a few Mississippi State field goals, which they have been really good at in the last two years, even though Leach did not take them in 2020, they'll have a chance to win the game. Tom, we'll leave it there this morning. Appreciate you jumping on with us as always. Good luck to your Braves the West, rest of the way, and hopefully we can talk about their first victory as of Tuesday. Oh, man, I like the sound of that. <laughs> have a great weekend, y'all. All right, Tom, you too. We'll see you in Starkville. All right, Tom Murphy with us. Tuesdays and Thursdays here on the Morning Rush. Football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like MLB. MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B-L-E-A-V. Bet Online, where the game starts.